I'd like to welcome you to the Presbytery of London's first ever online joint worship service. And for those of you who are new to the denomination, in the Presbyterian Church of Canada, we believe that we are stronger together. And so each individual congregation is placed in a ge geographic uh, boundary called the Presbytery. Once a month, each minister, along with an elder from each congregation, comes together uh, to make decisions for the wider good of the church. We're so glad that all of you are able to join us this morning as we worship together as the Presbytery of London. Friends, welcome. This morning in celebration of our blessings, we join together for worship as an Easter people. We wish to thank all our worship leaders for participating in this endeavor. We wish to give a special thanks to our musical leadership, Beth, Frank, Martin, and Rosemary. You are such a blessing and gift to our community. Let us worship God together.
praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted and his splendor is above the earth and the heavens. Praise the Lord. How very good and pleasant it is when people live together in unity, when forgiveness oils the wheels of relationships, when kindness is the currency, when understanding is the language that is learned, when issues can be aired and faced honestly, when friendship is nurtured above differences. How very good and pleasant it is when, when people, people live together, together in, in unity. unity. When food is shared and bread and wine brings us together. When we find in Jesus, there is no rich or poor, privileged or marginalized. When hope and peace wash away grudges and the desire to get even. How, How very good and pleasant, pleasant it is when, when people, people live, live together, together in, in unity. unity. Creator God, with grateful hearts we welcome another Eastertide Sunday, joyously repeating the ancient Christian greeting, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Be with us in this time and in each space as we come to worship. Bless us as we gather as a resurrection community, Easter people. Loving God, we confess our doubts. When our childhood understandings fall away, we feel exposed. When our long-held beliefs seem to crumble, we feel lost. When our convictions are questioned, we feel ashamed. Guide us into right paths, O God. Guide our feet in the way of peace. Guide our hands to care for others. Guide our hearts to love our neighbors. Call us back to you, O Christ, and renew our faith. When the ground is unsteady, loving God, put us back on right paths by doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with you. Amen. The Lord is our chosen portion and our cup. God binds us in, counsels our minds, and instructs our hearts. God helps us to stand firm for justice, mercy, and peace. When we fall, God lifts us up, forgives us, and remembers our sins no more. Thanks be to God. In this time beyond the walls of our church, I invite you, as we do in Glencoe and Wardsville online, to wish those in your community of faith and in your wider community the peace of Christ. Call and say hello. How are you? Send a text, an email, or drop a card, or a drive-by and toot the horn just to say hello. I'm thinking of you. God bless you. The peace of Christ. Please give everyone a virtual hug using the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Christ be with each of you. Amen.
Jesus is alive. It's evening, the first day of the week, and the disciples are together behind locked doors, still in fear of the Jewish leaders. Jesus is alive. And they know it because suddenly there he is standing among them. Shalom. Just an ordinary greeting, but there's nothing ordinary about this moment. As he shows them his hands and his side, the disciples are overjoyed. Jesus is alive. Shalom. Peace be with you. And then he gives them a job. My father sent me. Now I am sending you. And he gives them what they need for the job by breathing on them. Receive the Holy Spirit. What you forgive is forgiven. What you don't forgive is not. And then he goes. Jesus is alive. The disciples have seen him. Well, all the disciples but one. Thomas is his name. And when the others tell him what happened, he is incredulous. A much bigger word than doubting, which means much the same thing. And before you start casting aspersions and placing adjectives before his name, consider for a moment how you might have reacted. Had you, alone among your friends, missed the most amazing thing that was ever likely to happen to you? You say you saw the nail marks in his hands. You say you saw his wounded side? Well, until I put my fingers in those nail marks, until I put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Jesus is alive. A week has passed. The disciples are together again. And this time, Thomas is there too. The doors are still locked, but locks don't keep Jesus from suddenly standing among them again. Jesus greets them. Shalom. And then he turns to Thomas and holds out his hands. Put your finger here and put your hand into my side. Don't doubt, believe. But instead of reaching out his finger or his hand, Thomas simply opens his mouth. My Lord and my God, Jesus is alive. You have seen me, and because of that you have believed. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. And that's why this book has been written, John concludes, not to tell everything that Jesus did, but to tell enough that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you might have life in his name, because Jesus is alive. Alleluia. Amen. Good morning, everybody. It's time for our children's story this morning. How many of you out there like magic tricks? I, I know I do. I love magic tricks, especially trying to figure them out, right? And, and I don't always believe that they're going to be able to do what they say they're going to do. Like, for example, if I said to you that I was going to pull a rabbit out of my hat this morning, what would you say? Would you believe it? Do you think I can do that? No, there's no way I can fit a rabbit in this hat. It's too small. It's going to have to be a little baby bunny, isn't it, to fit in this hat? Well, let's see. If I take my hat off and I wave my hand over it and I go abracadabra and I reach in and I pull out a rabbit. Well, maybe not, it's a, maybe not a real rabbit. It's a paper rabbit. But I did pull a rabbit out of my hat. Maybe seeing isn't really believing necessarily, but let's try this again with something else. So I have a piece of paper here that says, seeing is believing, right? We have a hard time sometimes believing things that we haven't seen, that we haven't seen done, like magic tricks. And so I'm going to suggest that I can take these two paper clips and I can attach them to this piece of paper, and when I pull the paper apart, these two paper clips will become joined together. Do you believe me? Do you think I can do that, or do you need to see it? I'm going to try and do this here. So we have this piece of paper that says, seeing is believing, and I am going to fold it over and into, a, into an S shape. And then I'm going to take the paper clips and I'm going to put the paper clip on one end and the lower curve of the S. And then I'm going to take the other paper clip and put it on the other end of the paper on the closest S bend. 
and then I'm going to pull them apart. And when I pull this apart quickly, the paper clips are going to be joined together. They're going to fly off, so watch out at home, but they're going to fly off and they're going to be joined together. Are you ready for the trick? One, two, three. Let me run around here to the table and look at that. The paper clips are joined together. Sometimes we have to see to believe. Now, last week, last week was Easter. And on Easter, we were celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. And one of the stories from Easter Sunday is Jesus appearing to his disciples in that locked upper room. Except there was one disciple missing. Thomas wasn't there. And so later on that week, all the disciples, they came up to Thomas and said, Thomas, you should have been there. Jesus appeared to us. And Thomas says, I am not going to believe that. I can't believe it until I see Jesus for myself. And so a week later, the following Sunday, the disciples were gathered together again. And suddenly Jesus was in their midst. And Jesus came up to Thomas and he held out his hands and he said, Here, touch the, touch the nail holes in my, hand, in my hands and touch the wound in my side. Now, Thomas, do you believe? And Thomas fell to his knees and he said, Oh, Lord, my God. And Jesus said, Blessed are those who do not see but who still believe. And so we, you and I, we don't see Jesus. We don't see the figure of Jesus around us, amongst us. But what we do see is Jesus at work, right? We see the ideas of Jesus. We see the love of Jesus, the care of Jesus, the hope of Jesus, the, the helping of Jesus. We see that acted out all around us. And sometimes it's us doing it too as we love and care for others. And that helps not only us believe, but it helps others believe too because they see what Jesus means. Can you pray after me today? Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus. Help us believe and see you in those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Our reading today comes from 1 John 1, and we're reading from verse 1 to chapter 2, verse 2. And we're reading from the message. From the very first day we were there, taking it all in. We heard it with our own ears. We saw it with our own eyes, verified it with our own hands. The word of life appeared right before us. We saw it happen. Now we're telling you in the most sober prose that what we witnessed was incredibly this. The infinite life of God himself took shape before us. We saw it. We heard it. And now we're telling you so that you can experience along with us this experience of communion with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. Our, our motive for writing is simply this. We want you to enjoy this too. Your joy will double our joy. This, in essence, is the message we heard from Christ and we are passing on to you. God is light, pure light. There's no trace of darkness in him. If we claim that we experience a shared life with him and continue to stumble around in the dark, we're obviously lying through our teeth. We're not living what we claim. But if we walk in the light, God himself being the light, we also experience a shared life with one another as the sacrificed blood of Jesus, God's son, purchase all our sin. If we claim that we're free from sin, we're only fooling ourselves. A claim like that is errant nonsense. On the other hand, if we admit our sins, simply come clean about them, he won't let us down. He'll be true to himself. He'll forgive our sins and purge us of all wrongdoing. If we claim that we've never sinned, we are out and out contradict God. Make a liar out of him. A claim like that only shows off our ignorance of God. I write this, dear children, to guide you out of sin. But if anyone does sin, we have a priest friend in the presence of the Father, Jesus Christ, righteous Jesus. When he served as a sacrifice for our sins, he solved the sin problem for good, not only for ours, but for the whole world's. Here's how we know we can be sure that God is in the right way. Keep his commandments. We are community. We are community in and through the crucified and risen Christ. It's been said that to get through this pandemic, all you need is a computer, a cat, and a community. In the words of author Tom Sign, there is no way we can follow Jesus alone. We can follow him only in community with others. During the year of the pandemic, I feel we've gained a, a deeper appreciation for life in Christian community, for worship, fellowship, study, and ministry that is in person and online. By breaking bread together and by sharing our bread with others, we give our testimony to the risen Christ and work so that people's basic needs are met, 
in the spirit of the passage from Acts 4. We're connected with Presbyterians all across Canada in mission and ministry. Today at 4 p.m., you can meet with other Presbyterians from across the church by taking part in the online Easter with the Moderator event on Zoom. These gatherings with the Reverend Amanda Curry and brothers and sisters in Christ have been wonderful through first Advent, Lent, and now in the season of Easter. From the website of the Presbyterian Church in Canada, this explanation is given. It says, this gathering will include a look at the early church's witness of fellowship and sharing and invite us to identify and rejoice in the ways God's Spirit is drawing us together in unity and common mission today. We also share with mission partners through the vital work of Presbyterian World Service and Development. Last year, just weeks prior to the pandemic, I was able to participate in a PWSD mission monitoring trip to Malawi. It was a, a challenging and powerful experience to meet some of our mission partners and to see firsthand the amazing and life-giving work our partners are doing in maternal and children's health in parts of southern and northern Malawi with our support. Right here at Chalmers, we continue to operate our care and share food ministry for those struggling with food insecurity in the community. It's good that we've been able to continue and sustain this throughout the pandemic assisting up to 20 households every week with support from our partners at the London Food Bank. I know there are other congregations across the presbytery doing similar good work in the community. New St. James Presbyterian Church in London is providing community service and outreach every Monday and Monday evenings through the Northern Hospitality Dinners. Caradoc Presbyterian Church Volunteers there have made over a hundred masks and they were donated to the Strathroy Salvation Army Food Bank, Mount Bridges, Caring Cupboard, and Women's Rural Resource Center. And Knox Presbyterian in St. Thomas had a pay it forward month. People anonymously dropped off baking goods and Tim's cards and other things to be distributed to those in need in the congregation. These and other ministries continue in the spirit of what we read from Acts 4. Friends, during the pandemic, we've all discovered new and creative ways to come together to worship and serve God, to nurture life in community, and to share bread for the journey. By the grace of God, in the name of the risen Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are community. We are community. We are a community that is aware of and addressing the needs of our wider community. And we are a family, a community that walks together. Our psalm this morning, Psalm 133, is a psalm of ascent. The people of God sang this song, how good and how pleasant it is for us to live together in unity. This was a song they sang as they walked together to worship. Now I know in the last year, the walk to worship has looked a little different for all of us. No longer are we driving our cars and then walking in from parking lots. No longer is the walk to coffee time after church going into a church hall. Our walk to worship is a lot shorter from the bedroom to the family room, and coffee is usually picked up along the way in the kitchen. Nevertheless, in the last year, our churches have found creative ways to worship together and to walk together in faith. Some of our congregations have uh, offered online services on YouTube or Facebook. Others have held worship services weekly over Zoom. One congregation meets every Sunday on the telephone, 
singing, muting themselves and singing their hymns, listening to scripture together. Still other churches have been reading sermons during this season when we've been unable to be close together. I know of one church where their minister sends a sermon every week and then members call those who are unable to read the sermon themselves and they read the sermon to their friends over the telephone. We have been a creative group this past year. We have learned how to have Zoom Bible studies. We have learned how to creatively uh, grow our own faith, even though we're apart. And more than anything, I think that we have learned that sanctuary is not just buildings like this one. Sanctuary is something that God gives us that we can take with us outside of our church buildings. It's any place where we can rest in the presence of God. It's a state of mind more than it is any kind of building. We are community. We are a community who worships together. We give thanks to God for the gift of community. We are community. Wherever we are, we are community when we are a part of the light of Jesus. Walk in the light of Jesus is what 1 John reminds us to do, to be authentic in how we live our lives, to be the person that God has created us to be. And we cannot do that all by ourselves alone. And we are not meant to do that. Because God created in each one of us a desire to want to be connected with other people and a desire to be in community with him. God is community. God, our heavenly parent, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit together form community. And that is what we are invited as well to do. If we live authentic lives, we find ways to serve within our communities of faith and beyond. In the middle of pandemic, how do we do this? How do we touch the lives of other people and make a difference for Jesus? Some people have said, I feel like I'm just waiting. And yes, we are waiting and we are living. We are waiting to be together and gather together in our communities of faith. However, our community of faith is wherever we go when we share the love of Christ and trust that he is with us always. I'd like to invite you to think uh, about Camp Kintail, a camp that is situated on Lake Huron and offers a multitude of opportunities for children's growth in their Christian walk and their development, but also opportunities for youth, adults, and seniors, and opportunities that are now available to those who could not in the past have had the same opportunity because they are wheelchair accessible. Exciting news. For all the kids that wanted to go to camp last year until the pandemic hit, everything was halted. And suddenly everything at Camp Kintail was on hold. Did they wait? Yes, they are still waiting to see what God has in store for them. But in the meantime, they have uh, taken opportunities in which they could share the love of God. And they did this in one way with the Huron Women's Shelter. They opened up the nest for three months and allowed women a safe place to come where they could stay in a bedroom with their own bathroom and have a meal prepared for them and know that they were okay. That's community. We are community. Together with God, we are community.
We are a community, the family of God. Here all should be valued for themselves. We are one body in Christ, together rejoicing when things go well, supporting one another in sorrow, celebrating the goodness of God and the wonder of our redemption. We are community. We reach out in love. Love means seeking the best for others and is the mark of a Christian. Love for God leads to love for others. We cannot claim to love God, whom we do not see, if we hate those about us whom we do see. Love of God and of neighbor fulfills the law of God. We are community, Christ's likeness lived out. And now let us pray for ourselves and for our world. Everlasting God, help us to make space for you in every portion of our lives, even in the ordinariness of everyday life. Help us to find room for your love and your presence in our places of work, in our homes, in our schools, and most importantly, in all of those places that we try to hide from you. We know that you are chasing after us, and we ask that we would be open enough and brave enough and faithful enough to let you in. We know without question that you come to us in our everyday lives, moving out of this sacred space of worship into our incredibly stressed and hectic worlds. Forgive us when we aren't always ready for you, when we don't always see you or feel your presence. Forgive us when we see Easter as a Sunday, not as a season, not as a way of life, not as a fresh start. O oh Lord, we acknowledge that we let so many things crowd our lives, and too often we let distractions blot out our awareness of your presence. Even though for some of us it's hard to see the risen Christ, we have the assurance of your presence and your love with us. Remind us to stand up and to rejoice in this fact. Help us embrace the truth as we live out our lives of resurrection. And so we come to you, Lord. We come to you with all of our fears and our doubts, with our joys and our sorrows, with our longings and our dreams. And as we do, we bring to you prayers for those people whom we love and for whom issues of loneliness and pain, of suffering and grief and loss seem to abound. We long to be their shoulder to lean on. We long to be your arms to hold them tight as we share your compassion and grace. We bring to you a prayer for those that go without, without food, without shelter, without friendship, without hope. We long to reach out in helpful and faithful ways, ways that reflect your light into the community around us and into the world. Help us to share the light of Christ and to be the face of Jesus to all whom we meet. And at the same time and with the same assurance, we raise to you all, the, all of those who have rejoiced in newfound faith, who have reconciled with loved ones, who have survived tragedy and sorrow, who are happy, who want to dance in celebration for the goodness that has entered their lives. Hear us, heal us, and bless us, O Lord. For we ask these things as an Easter people, in the name of the one who was raised, that we might have eternal life. We now use the words that he taught us to pray together as one family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.
And now, friends, may God be with us as we leave this place and fill our lives with love. May Christ inspire us to bring the good news of peace and hope wherever we go. And may the Spirit lead us to live the resurrection as Easter people. Amen. Thank you.